My name is John Ambrose. I work in the Dean's office here at the Huntsman School of Business, and it's my pleasure to introduce Spencer Berg. He's an alumni of this fine institution right here at Huntsman, and he's going to be representing Buckner, which is a great opportunity for our undergraduates here. I can't recommend enough. A little bit of background on Spencer. Uh, Spencer did a bachelor's degree in economics right here at Utah State, as mentioned, class of 2018. He had a whole bunch of different opportunities along the way, including doing research as an undergraduate research fellow at the Center of Growth and Opportunity here at Utah State. He was a teaching fellow here at Utah State as well during his time here. And then since going on full-time at Buckner, he's done a bunch of stuff, being an account assistant, being doing account management, and now he's the director of the internship program along with the sales development, helping out every single sales representative at Buckner to be able to perform better and add revenue to the firm. With that, I'm gonna turn the time over to Spencer. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks everybody for getting on. I'm excited to talk to you about Buckner. Um, before I get going, this is my little pitch here. Um, as, as John mentioned, I had a lot of opportunities um, when I was in school. I interviewed with a lot of different financial analytics companies and uh, I, I won't say any specific names. And my, my biggest thing when I was interviewing with some of these bigger names was um, they have the reputation of putting people to work and working you 55 to 60 hours a week on average, which was fine. But when there was an opportunity um, with Buckner, for example, when they were saying on average it's only 40 hours a week, but we still compensate you pretty well. Uh, we want you to have a good family, work life balance. All of these things has great growth potential. It was a, it was a no brainer. Right. And it's been, and it's been a great place for me, especially when I was finishing up school. I already had my first kid. Um, and so it's been, a, it's been an awesome place for me and all the promises that they made about growth potential and career path have all come true and it's been really awesome. So that's my little pitch in there. Um, just to keep your guy, I would just encourage you guys to keep your eyes open for opportunities that aren't specifically in financial analytics or something like that, which is generally um, pushed when you're a finance or economics degree. Um, that's my little pitch there, but let me introduce you guys to Buckner and what we're about, what we do, and then you can answer questions if you want. Um, so a few things about Buckner. Um, we're a third generation fa um, family owned business. Um, the CEO right now is actually the grandson of the founder of the company. And because of that, we've tried to, Buckner's tried really hard to keep that as a, a core component of our culture. Um, so when you, when you work here, or when you're walking around, you'll, you'll see very clearly that that family type atmosphere is very strongly rooted into how, how we um, go about business. Um, a few other things on this for you. Um, currently we have seven offices over three states. Uh, we have Boise, Rexburg, Idaho Falls, Ogden, Salt Lake, which is the headquarters, Pleasant Grove, and then Denver. Uh, and we're, we're growing constantly. We're looking at some acquisitions in New Mexico and Arizona and Kentucky. Um, and so we're growing fast and furious. So it's a, it's a fun time. A few other things about Buckner is for 2020, we received a lot of awards. Um, one of the things that's not listed on here is our CEO um, won the CEO of the of the year award. Our vice president of marketing won a, the woman of the year award for Utah, and then some other stuff on here. We're a top 100 PNC, which is property and casualty agency in the country for 2020, um, and a few other awards that you guys can see there at the bottom. So, great time to be here. And so the question is, what is Buckner. I mean, you guys saw it's insurance, um, but I remember when I was um, looking into it, I had the perception in my mind of what I generally see as insurance as like State Farm or Nationwide or something like this. And a lot of times the, that type of insurance has a bad connotation to it. Uh, the people that are sleazy or that are just calling all their family to try to drum up business, right? That is completely the opposite <laughs> of what we do. Um, <clears throat> I want you guys to think about a business that you, that you know, okay? 
does anybody have any a business that came to their mind? Could be anything. How about McDonald's? Okay, McDonald's. So let's just think about how many different locations McDonald's has, okay? Thousands, tens of thousands, right? Let's think about how many employees they have across the world. Hundreds of thousands, maybe? If we think about the risk that they have with like their, their technology, so for their cyber, for example, think about how dense and deep that exposure is, right? pretty massive they've also have they have their presence on um, their media presence and that's risky if they say something that they shouldn't say right so think about that and think of if mcdonald's by themselves could manage that risk all on their own they might have some pretty sophisticated risk management um people some departments that help them do that but most likely for them to get a true risk management program, they're going to need to have a middleman to help get them connected to the right insurance carrier to provide policies and make sure that they are covered for all those different types of risk, right? So that's where Buckner comes into play. What an insurance broker is, is that middleman between the insured, which is the business owner, and an insurance company like Nationwide or Liberty Mutual, um, you might think, well, a business should be able to just do that on their own. Why would they need a middleman? If a business is a startup, that might be true. But the moment that they start growing, things get complicated very quickly. And that business owner is not going to want to try to manage that all on their own. In addition to that, that business owner is probably going to have only access to a small portion of those insurance carriers, where when they work with a middleman or insurance brokerage, we, as being a one, top 100 insurance agency in the country, we have access to hundreds of different markets that would, be, that would help us put them with the best fit for their, um, their type of operations. Does that make sense for everybody? And so we, we hold a very key, important role in the economy, okay? And this is where, um, this is my, my pitch about insurance, and there's another slide about this. Um, this career has been incredibly generous for me, and it's also incredibly stable. I am at zero, basically zero risk for losing my job, even with a huge economic downturn that we're having with COVID. I never had to worry even a second about losing my job. And it's because every single business is required by law to have insurance on their, poly, on their properties, for their employees. And so I am not at risk of losing my job. And that's a great place to be, let me tell you. So that's my little pitch there. But that is what an insurance brokerage is, is that middleman. Okay. So goes a little bit over this. Um, it's super sustainable career in insurance um, and it's teamwork driven. This is very different than what you imagine in um, personal lines insurance, like your personal auto, like the Geico and all of that. When you're working for these multi-million dollar companies, for example, you really have to work as a team and it's very complex. Okay. And so with, with that, it's also not boring. Um, the types of risks or operations that I've worked on have been very broad. <laughs> and so for an example, one of my clients, um, they're a potato manufacturer out of Idaho, or in, a, in essence, a potato manufacturer where they take potatoes and take the potato starch and they turn it into a biodegradable plastic that's then used to make biodegradable bags. And this account, they, they currently just went under contract about a year ago with China and Japan um, to make 80% of the plastics for those countries that are putting in government mandates for 80% of their plastics to be biodegradable by the year 2022. 
I don't think that sounds very boring. I don't know about you. That has been really cool for me to be involved in these type of companies that are very interesting and complex, right? And to be a very important key component to running their business where they could not run it without us, right? So that's been really cool. And insurance is everywhere. It's the backbone of the economy. Like I said, without insurance, there would be no economy, okay? There would be no buildings being built. You can't build a building without having a builder's risk policy in place. You wouldn't be able to have a job right? Without insurance, because by law, you have to have protection for if you get injured. Insurance is everywhere. It's the backbone of the economy. So once again, really great career to be in. So a little bit about more what we do. So we do commercial lines, which is what I was talking about, the businesses and what they need. We have a department that does employee benefits. And so when you start at a company and they tell you their benefits plan, We have a department that helps companies put those together. And then we also have the private client group. This is different than what you would imagine for like Geico, where Geico, you usually go there if you have one car and you just need some cheap insurance just to keep the police off you, right? Um, the The private client group is more for the high net wealth individuals. Once again, once they start gaining more assets under them, they can't it doesn't make sense for them to take the time to manage that on their own. So they uh, hire somebody else to help them take care of that. Okay. Do we have any questions so far? Okay. I'll just keep going. Um, So typical roles in an agency, there's three. We have accounting and marketing and HR and that kind of stuff, but it's pretty small. We only have a couple of people within those departments where the main roles are a client advisor, which is kind of our sales role. And that's what I'm over is the training and development for all of the sales guys in our company. Um, We have account managers, which are the people that help with the processing and um, helping take care of accounts once they are clients. And then we have an account assistant, which is kind of the entry-level position that is kind of the assistant to the account manager for helping process um, some of the requests. Any questions there before I move on? So one thing I would add to this, um, this is just within within an agency. Now, insurance carriers is a different story. Insurance carriers have very complex organizations, okay? Very complex um, departments. Um, They have data analytics. They have um, loss control. They have have software engineers. They have um, information systems. They have have a lot of stuff, okay? Um, So this is just an agency. But as, a, as an industry in whole, there is unlimited options of what you could do for a career. And I say this because during our internship program last year, um, one of the carriers that we worked with said this to the interns is, um, there, is a, there is a career path for any personality type within insurance. And on average, insurance pays higher salaries than most industries. And so it's like, it's a no brainer to try to get into a career path in insurance where you get paid better and it's specifically suited to your, um, to your personality traits. I had a question, Spencer, you mentioned how the account assistant is that entry level role. You also mm-hmm. talk about how there's a lot of different branches within the whole industry for those different personality types. Uh, Buckner, at least, what does it typically look like just at the agency level for someone to stay in that account assistant role and then potentially move up to an account management? management role or potentially branch off like what you ended up doing down the road? So like timeline wise, is that what you mean? Yeah. So like how long, I know it varies based on, I'm assuming a lot of things, but typically how long are they in that entry level role? So my path was a little bit different with this. Um, I started as an account assistant and I, me personally, I was very aggressive 
with taking on new opportunities, doing continued education, um, where generally you would move from an account assistant to a junior account manager within six months to a year. And I did it in two months. Um, and then you usually move from a junior account manager to an account manager after a year. And I did it in my first six months. So that kind of gives you a timeline, but usually you can move from an account assistant all the way up to an account manager, depending on your work style, your work ethics, anywhere for, um, probably on average of a year of being in that role. Um, I stayed as an account manager for about two years um, before switching to this new position. But I mean, from an account manager, you can, there's a full career path even going up from an account manager as well. So does that answer your question? Okay. So I'll just keep going on this. Um, if you guys have more questions at the end, you can definitely ask them. Chase, did you have something? Yeah, so I, I know you mentioned like the different roles there within the agency. Um, and just out of curiosity, kind of like the career path I'm going towards, I was wondering if Buckner like employs like actuaries. So that is a great question. And yes, um, but where you're going to see more success with if you're wanting to be an actual actuary, that is more on the carrier side. OK. So to give you a perspective on this, <clears throat> this is one of the great things about our internship program, if I do say so myself. Um, but one of the great things about our program is that every Friday we go and spend time with different industry partners. And what happened with that, it was funny, after the internship program ended a few months ago, one of our insurance carriers reached out to me and said, hey, we are creating a data analytics um, department in our, in our company and we really liked your interns. Do you suggest any interns um, for us to try to hire? Our salary is around, on average, is gonna be $60,000 starting for this entry level position. My, my response was, yes, I have the perfect person. Her background in college was actuarial science. She loves math and statistics. Reach out, um, let me reach out, um, let me connect you with her. And she just graduated school in May and is starting, has an entry level position starting at $60,000 with a bachelor's degree, right? So my short answer is within the agency, if you're wanting to do actuarial science or like deep data stuff of trying to calculate rates for different types of risk, specifically for Buckner, that's not something we really do because we rely on the carriers to do that for us. That being said, can we connect you to the right people for a career path in that? Absolutely. Does that answer your question, Chase? Yeah, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Thank you. So well, I'll keep going. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to interrupt me. One of the awesome things that I've really tried to take advantage of is Buckner has an open wallet for continued education within the, in within the industry. So this doesn't include like you going and getting your MBA or something like that. What we are in trying to encourage our employees to do is to be more knowledgeable about the industry. So for me, for example, I have, um, I have my WCIP, I have my CISR, and I have my CIC. And a CIC is basically a bachelor's degree in insurance. Um, my next one I'm gonna be working on is my CRM, which is a certified risk manager. And that's basically a bachelor's, bachelor's degree in risk management. And then after that, I'll go on and do my CPC, which is basically a master's or PhD level um, designation, but within insurance. And the awesome thing is if you're someone like me where I'm super, um, interested in growing my knowledge and becoming better at my career and excelling myself, Buckner pays for it. You don't have to pay for any of it. And it's an awesome thing. And each of these, each of these things, each of these designations that you get propels your, um, propels your career exponentially to the point where, for example, 
if I needed to move somewhere, anywhere in the country, I have a job wherever I want to go because they'll see next to my name. I have a CIC, a CISR, a WCIP. I automatically put myself much higher than most of the applicants that they're going to get. So if I ever needed to move, I could do it and have a job, a high paying job pretty easily. And so it's awesome that Buckner does that and pays for all of it for their employees and gives you a bonus on top of it when you get it. Pretty cool. So a few other things, um, we're super involved in the community. We do a lot of community events. We call it Buckner Cares. Um, some of these we have volunteered at like burn camps or um, cancer runs, a few other ones on here we've done like um, food bank or we've done like donations like Christmas donation boxes for um, orphans and stuff like that. Pretty cool. As part of the internship program, this is one of the events that we do is we last year we went to a battered women's shelter in Ogden and spent the day cleaning up the women's shelter. Um, we went we went to Costco and bought a bunch of supplies for them and donated that to them. Really cool stuff. Um, and the cool thing is, is that we open this up to the employees as saying, hey, if you guys hear about something in the, the community that we should be involved in, please let us know and we'll do our best to, um, to, to reach out to them for that. So pretty cool. This, that's something that I re I've really appreciated. Um, so this is what I wanted to talk about our internship program. I put, there's a lot on this slide, but it's because I wanted to give you guys a full view of what the internship program really looks like, okay? So it's a 12, it's a 10 week program. And the point of the internship program is to give you an overview of the entire industry. And so instead of, so we've kind of done away with interns that only do account management or only do production. We've opened it so that we put you through rotations where you spend some time in every department of the company where you get a feel of what that job is like. You get to work on some projects, you get a job shadow, you get to do all of these things and you get to experience what it's like to be in that role for a week. And on the flip side, we're also able to look at you and see, hey, this person is really good for this type of role, right? And so it's also a, a way for us to really get a good grasp of where you would fit in within the company. So the first week is just technology and coverage training. Weeks two and three are sales. Um, and then weeks four through nine, you spend a week in each of the different departments, whether it's with accounting or account management or marketing um, or like working with the executive team, looking at mergers and acquisitions. And then the final week of the, uh, of the program is, an, is a competition where you are looking at the agency and your experience the nine weeks prior and then picking something that you feel like the agency could do better at. And then you do a presentation um, with one of the other interns and the team of two interns that wins, um, that team, each of those interns wins a $1,000 scholarship. So pretty cool opportunity. And then wrapped into that every Friday, we have our industry partner days, kind of like what I mentioned. Um, this past year, because of COVID, we didn't do a lot of actually going places. We went to only like two, but we did a lot of virtual meetings and like for example, we we had a virtual meeting with the the risk director for FJ Management, which was really cool. Um, talking about all that they do, um, like Flying J, all that stuff. He talked about all their different business models and how risk fit into that. Um, so, point of it, once I once again, like I said, is the program is um, intentioned to give you a full grasp of what the industry is in general. Any questions there? I had a, a question, Spencer. Because you have this rotational model with the internship, I'm assuming that students are exposed to a lot of the different areas. What opportunities do students have, uh, whether after the internship or down the road, to be able to specialize in the areas that they really enjoyed working in during their internship? So I'm going to go to the next slide to answer that. 
So we hired, we had six interns last year. And out of the six, we hired three of them for full time. And the only, the only reason why we didn't hire the other three is because they just weren't ready to dive into a career yet. Whether that was because they had a year or two more of school and they didn't really want to commit to something yet. Or um, like one of them, he was like, I loved the experience, but it really gave me a good look that I just don't want to, I want to be in sports is basically what he said. Um, but to your point, because of the rotational program, we're able to get a really good sense of where they would be good. Um, so the three that were hired, they all were in different positions, which was the weird thing. One of them was in account management as an account assistant. One of them was in um, production as a client advisor. And one of them was actually in operations as an operations specialist. The one that was an operations specialist, he came into the problem um, the program thinking that he wanted to be in sales. He, he thought he was good with people, talking with people, um, generating ideas and communicating that to people. But throughout the program, we identified that he would, he would not do good. <laughs> he, would, he would not excel in that role, but that he was really, really good at putting ideas together and helping collaborate with different departments and so that so in that way we were able to actually create a position for him within our operations as an operations specialist um, so to answer your question it just really depends on the individual um, what the opportunities would be after the internship program like I said one of the interns is actually looking at moving on to a carrier instead of working at an agency but she only got that opportunity because of the program. She wouldn't have had that opportunity otherwise. Does that answer your question? Okay. And these are just some fun pictures. Um, this was the first day of the program. And then this was the last day of the program. See, there's so much more educated. They look so much smarter after 10 weeks. Um, <laughs> and then I took all of them to Top Golf for our end of the program party, which was really fun. Um, so where this comes to you guys, um, in terms of, we are really looking at all majors and all backgrounds, um, where I really am looking in terms of applicants, what I'm really looking for is more personality fit. It's kind of like Coke in that sense. I know Coke really, um, tries to, to look for just good, solid, honest, ethical people, right? And that's kind of where they make their hiring decisions. It's very similar to how I'm going about this. Um, is I'm really, in, for example, for sales, I'm looking for people that are very easy to talk to. I ask myself during the interview, man, would I buy insurance from this person? Would I, if I was a business owner, would I let them take care of my risk or not? Are they presentable? Are they easy to talk to, right? Do they seem like they know what they're talking about? Are they confident? For an account manager type role, I still am looking for that personality of being confident, but I'm also looking for something more analytical, someone that likes data, someone that's good with spreadsheets, right? So it doesn't really matter about major. The reason why at the beginning I said about accounting, for example, is that account, accounting majors generally really, really wanna do accounting. <laughs> Sometimes not the case there. That was just what they heard was the best major to do. And then they're just trying to figure out along the way. But generally, that's what they're wanting to do is to work for PwC or some of these other companies, right, as in their accounting departments or to work in tax or something. So it's just not the right fit. Well, that's why finance majors and econ majors and business administration majors are perfect, right? Because you guys just you're really open, you know you wanna work in some sort of finance type industry, or you know you're good with numbers and you like numbers, or you know that you like business operations, you just don't know what it is yet, right? So, um, in terms of applying for the internship program, technically um, we're closing the application tomorrow at midnight. For Utah State, we are keeping it open in terms of um, being able to apply until next Wednesday because we're doing the Econ Career Day. Um, 
But if you guys are interested, you do not have to email HR. You can just email me directly. It's um, S-B-E-R-G, S-Berg at Buckner.com. And if you just send me your resume, I'll take that as you're, you're applying. And then I'll just put it into the mix on trying to decide on who I'm going to interview in a couple of weeks. So with that, I'm going to open up to questions. I know I went over a lot of information. Um, so hopefully there's a lot of different questions that you guys have. Hey, Spencer. Yeah. I think maybe one question to help me talk to other students also would be to the degree, to what degree the internship is uh, remote or like in person 100%. So it is in person 100%. Yeah. Kind of what we feel with that. And even during COVID, I mean, we have the social distancing is we are an essential business meaning that we don't have the same mandates that a lot of different industries have. That being said, we do wear masks. We try to keep the six, six feet, all that kind of stuff. But for you to have the real experience, you do have to be here. And so, I mean, for example, for Utah State, that is a question that I'm going to be asking in interviews is, okay, you go to school at Utah State, but where are you going to be this summer? Are you going to be in Salt Lake? Right. Because what, what, I, what I don't want is for people to be commuting, commuting from Logan to Salt Lake every day, for example. That would be awful. I don't want that for anybody. Right. So does that answer your question, Paul? OK. Any other questions? How are we doing on time, John? Doing... So yep, I guess we... killing it. You've got time if you if you want, we could wrap whatever's fine. I mean, I don't have really anything else. Um, one thing I would say, I can I can show you guys our website for a couple of minutes if you want. Would that be helpful? There's a bunch of stuff on there. Would that be helpful? Okay, well, let's do that. I'm going to pull up our website. <clears throat> okay, let me know if you can see this. Yep. So our website has a lot of information about the company. And so if you guys are really thinking about reaching out about the program or about um, a career or anything like that, I would first start here for example if you guys are wanting to look at our management team or about any of our different any of the different producers for example here at buckner there's information about them here's me right there gives me gives a little bit of background about me and what i do for the company um, there's also some stuff about us like for example in our story um we just came out with the 2020 annual report um, that basically goes over some of the successes that we had. And so you'll see in here that our CEO won CEO of the year, um, that seven of our client advisors were in the top 100 client advisors in the company, in the country. Some of the other awards that we got, um, some other stuff. I mean, there's something about the internship program here or about who Buckner is and our breakdown of employees and stuff like that. Hey, Spencer. Yeah. I don't know if you can comment on this at all, but just curious after looking kind of the top producers, can you maybe give us all a sense? Okay, if you're a top producer in this industry, just generally, about how much compensation <laughs> do you make, right? Okay, yeah, that's a great question. And I can share it very openly. I have no problem. Um, so for example, Bayot, he is the top producer in the state. Okay. Um, his book of business is about $2.6 million of revenue. Okay. His cut of that. So that's, that's company revenue. His cut of that 
is 40%. So Bayot is currently making over a million dollars a year. And one thing that's different with insurance than regular sales is that with regular sales, you make the sale and then you move on to the next, to the next client, right? You don't, it's not residual really. With insurance, you keep the same clients every year and they have to pay insurance every year, right? And so it really is more like a stable income than regular sales. So Bayot, for example, this year he's making a million, but whatever new business he brings in, it just grows on top of that. So if he brings in another $300,000, he's making another hundred grand, right? On top of that, just in one year. So it's really one of the only industries where you can, you have a say over your increase in income every year. And it doesn't fluctuate. It only increases unless you lose accounts or whatever. But if you're able to keep accounts, it just grows, right? On that topic, um, for sales, for example, um, if, you're make, if you're able to make it through your first three, um, three years, um, generally on average, you're pretty easily making over $100,000 by that point in three years. Um, and, and it's either you make it in three years or you don't. And then you just move on to a different career. But if you make it through your first three years, you're you're basically guaranteed over a hundred grand by that point, and it just grows from there, right? So once again, once again, like I said, very sustainable lifestyle, very comfortable, um, very good career path. You kind of write your own story, and you get compensated very, very well. <laughs> For what you do i can't tell you how many teslas we have in our parking lot so many All right so anyways and the cool thing about it is it's super analytical right super strategic uh, you really have to be creative and some of these producers like justin for example he's the smartest guy i know like literally the most analytical strategic thinker that i i've ever met and the dude makes once again eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars a year. That's double what doctors make after fourteen years of being in school, <laughs> right? So, anyways, I digress. Can't stress it enough. So, any questions there? I mean, with that, one, one little note, I would say, obviously, account management, you're not the one bringing in the, um, in the production, right? And so, obviously, those salaries aren't that aggressive, right? But it's also a lot less stressful. One thing I would say with that is, I mean, they do compensate fairly well and much above average, where, for example, in account management after five years, you're pretty easily going to be over $75,000 as a salary. So still great, right? So, and sustainable, right? Not really much of a risk of losing your job unless you're just really bad at your job. <laughs> but I don't think that's exclusive to insurance, Spencer. <laughs> right, right. Very true. <laughs> so any other questions? I know I've thrown around a lot of stuff. Um, let me just see if I can exit out of here. I mean, there's some other stuff on here, like we have some videos on here about some of our producers and their backgrounds or about like the Buckner Care stuff or um, some of our clients. There's some videos on here about that. I'm trying to think if there's really anything else you should be aware of. Um, Buckner Connect is also a really cool thing that we do, which is basically a networking event where our idea behind this was let's connect some of the biggest um, industry leaders and let's connect them through a, an event all in the same room where they can collaborate on ideas. And let's bring in a speaker um, that has a cool story. Um, so for, exa for example, Frank Abagnale, he was the director of the CIA 
Um, he, you can see him in Catch Me If You Can, for example, and he was that big cyber, um, he, he was super into cyber, right? And so basically what this Buckner Connect event was, was talking about cyber risk and how it's so prevalent and how businesses need to get, get their stuff together <laughs> for controlling that type of risk. Frank Caliendo was actually at this event um, from, from Utah State. Um, but there's, we, we've done quite a few other ones so there's that that was what that one was or like we did a ski day with a bunch of olympic athletes um that was really cool this guy right here he was one of the first pilots to fly over new york after 9 11. um we had a team usa thing talking about challenges and being a professional athlete and you could wear their medals. Um, this guy right here, he was the lead engineer for the Challenger for those O-rings. Um, Challenger was the space shuttle that blew up um, after launch. And his big thing was to be ethical and to stand up for what you believe, even when no one listens to you, because he told everybody that the O-rings were defective and they didn't listen and they launched anyways and it blew up, right? So. Anyways, lots of cool things that you get to be involved with in, in this type of organization is kind of kind of my point there. So that's all I have. Um, I'm going to ask one more time. Anybody have any questions? Hey, well, John, I'm going to take that as a no. So um, once again, if you guys have any questions or want more information, feel free to reach out to me. Um, once again, technically the application closes on Friday or tomorrow at midnight, um, but for Utah State, because of the Econ Career Day, we are keeping it until next Wednesday. Um, I would not wait wait until then. <laughs> I would play sooner than later if you're wanting to, but. Thank you so much, Spencer. This has been great. Really do appreciate you being reached out and connected with our students. Thanks again. Um, I'm, I already put Spencer's email in the chat, so feel free to reach out. Uh, Spence, thank you so much. Yep. Thank you, guys. And maybe I'll see a few of you next week.